Hey guys, bye for truth. So what I want to do is I want to show you something. Um, this is the point I've been trying to prove uh, from the Bible for quite a while. Uh, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people are falling victims to um, being respected as a person. I think that's the big thing that we fall victim to. And also we, the, the, we put our confidence in men. For whatever reason we do that, we put our confidence in men and not in the word of God. See, because people like to see things, but God says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We see things by faith, okay? Faith. Faith. There's a verse in the Bible that would clear up so much heresy if I could actually get you to believe it, right? But it's like everybody has their, you know, everybody, you know, you have to make a choice whether you're going to believe something or not. 2 Corinthians 4.18 is one of these verses where it's like, it clears up so much heresy, guys. It's not even funny. It's not, I mean, this would destroy somebody who went to seminary for a PhD based on their quote-unquote eschatology and their beliefs about certain things. The question I'm going to ask you to, today is I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Let me ask you this. Let me start, let me start from fresh here. I'm going to ask you this, is, let's see if I can just make this big here, start here, and um, I'm going to go bold, is God eternal? That's my first question for you, is God's kingdom eternal? Does, um, is God's children eternal those are the three questions i have for you now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna look i mean the first question is kind of silly like so when i say eternal is like saying immortal so we'll look up let's look up the first one let's see if i can find the phrase eternal god right okay <clears throat> Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. So, is God eternal? Yes. We can answer the first question, yes. Okay? Is God's kingdom eternal? Is it an everlasting kingdom or is it a kingdom that fades? What do we think? Let's see, let's see if we can look up phrase. So let's see, ever, our everlasting kingdom. Okay. Thy kingdom is an, thy kingdom, right? M, no S is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endure throughout all generations. Okay. So we can say to answer the second question. Yes. Okay. Is God's children eternal? Well, He says, I give unto them eternal life, and they that and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So that would be a what? Yes. Okay. So we've established that all things of God are eternal. Okay? So let's look at what the Bible says about eternal things. So let's look at characteristics of eternal things. Okay. It's the reason why I'm doing this, guys. In the Bible, it says concerning eternal, 2 Corinthians 4, 18. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, 
but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. The things which are seen are temporal. So let's let's type that in, guys. Let's do this. Insert table. All right. I'm gonna make I'm gonna shrink it a little bit here. Go down to ten, maybe. Okay. Temporal. Let's say um, temporal seen. Okay. Eternal not seen. Okay. All right. So it says here. Let's do this. Second Corinthians four eighteen. Let's just copy this in. See if we can do this. Second Corinthians four eighteen. Okay. Let's go ahead and make this bigger. Okay. So here's what we're gonna say. Things which are seen are temporal. Things which are not seen are temporal. So if you can see it, it's temporal. If it's eternal, it's not seen. We just saw, let's do this a couple of things we were doing. Uh, skipping here, so let's, let's, let's do a page cut. Here, let's do a page thing, okay. Insert, let's see, can we get a page break here? Break, all right. All right, so let's start here. Let's make this a little smaller. I think it's a little too big. I don't have to go that, that big, right? Let's go 18, okay? All right, guys. So God, is he temporal or eternal? Well, you should agree he's eternal. God's kingdom, is he temporal or eternal? It's eternal. God's children, are they temporal or eternal? Well, he says he gives them eternal life, right? So let's look at a couple of other things, guys. Let's look at a couple of other things. Now, this statement messes up a lot of stuff for a lot of people, and I'm gonna to explain to you why. If you agree that God is not temporal, meaning he's mortal, meaning he's temporal, you have to go by the criteria that everything that's temporal is seen. Now, you have a problem. The man, Jesus, did you see him? Yes. Right? That's a yes. Okay? See if I can insert some rows under here. Let's see if I can do this here. Uh, insert. Oh no, I'm sorry. I should have thought about this. I thought I could just click here and do this, but apparently not. Let's see if I can go across and see if I can do it working like that. Right? Oh, insert row below. There we go. Um, let's do a couple of these here. Insert row below. Let's do this. See if we can do the insert below. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, the man, Christ Jesus, you saw him, right? Can you still see your flesh? your flesh. Yes, you can see it. Can you see a place called in this world, some place that they're calling Israel and Jerusalem? Well, yes. Can you see Israel 
slash Jerusalem. Can you see it? Yes. So we can see these things right now, right? We saw the man Jesus. We saw you can see your flesh. You can see Israel. In fact, you can go outside. You can even see this world, right? This world. Yes. Okay. Now, if the Bible's true, and it is, we've already seen that God, his kingdom, and his children are all eternal. Right? But the problem you're going to have is people saw the man Christ Jesus. People saw him. And that's why it says that body is, is mortal. God's not mortal. Okay? So it says, just to look it up, we want to confirm all these things. But it's the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. That's the man Christ Jesus from the dead, the mediator between God and man. Dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your what kind of body? Mortal bodies. By his what? Spirit. God's the spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in the spirit and truth. And it also says... Hopefully. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise accounted for the seed. So, as far as eternal life is concerned, God's children have eternal life, they're not seen. Children of the flesh, you can see them. You can currently see your flesh. And that's saying your flesh is not eternal. And so if your flesh is not eternal, can your flesh inherit the kingdom of God? Well, no. The Bible says, now this I say, brother, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Well, you're, it's mortal, right? It's mortal. Now, <clears throat> let me do something a little unorthodox here. See what we can do here. We're going to this. We're going to uh, okay. This is a little test. Can you guys see these images? Can you see those? Just curious, can you see those? Can you see these images? Can you see this, the flag of Rimfam star and all that kind of stuff? Can you see those images? Can you see that dome and the sky there? It took a picture, right, with a camera. So you can see that, right? You get on a plane, you can fly over, you can see that. So this means it's temporal, right? Temporal. Right. Mortal temporal. Right? The man Jesus is temporal. This world, you can see it, right? Go outside, take a look, it's temporal. Okay? So hopefully you are getting what I'm saying here. People are saying God's kingdom is gonna come, quote unquote, to this world, meaning it's gonna manifest in the way that's physically discernible. That's not true. That's why Jesus said, See if I can find it. Okay, I think I'm doing something wrong.
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye there them that are entering to go in. Right? He's basically saying, look, there's people who don't believe, and why can't they enter? Because you can't enter by flesh and blood. So how do you, how could you stop? How could a how could a Pharisee or a scribe stop a person from entering the kingdom of God? Well, if you got to be born again to enter the kingdom of God, well, what do I need to do? I just need to prevent people from being born again. Well, how can I stop people from being born again? I just preach against the gospel. I give you a false Christ. I give you a false gospel. That'll stop you from being born again. Thus, see, I, the person who does that, they don't go in. Neither will they suffer anyone else to go in. But that's why it was said to these guys. It was said, look, in saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe what? The gospel. They were seeking to do it by works. He was saying, look, you can't do it by works. You got to be born again and enter the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus was telling Nicodemus. He says, look, that was born of flesh is flesh. That was born of, of uh, spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. So likewise, ye, when you shall see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is not even at what hand. Jesus is offering you the kingdom, right? He's offering the kingdom. But the people who are the children of the kingdom, those are those who come, who have been born again into the kingdom. They're coming and offering you the, the kingdom via the gospel, okay? So let's go back. Based on this, based on these things being temporal, the question you have to ask, the Trinity teaches that what? You must include the flesh of Jesus as God. Can that be true based on this verse? No, because God is what? Here's why this that can't be true. God is eternal. <laughs> Cardinal Zionists try to teach you that God's kingdom is going to come and is going to be here for a quote unquote thousand years. And their their way of believing or interpreting that verse is that it's going to People are going to look up in the sky and they're all going to see Jesus coming in the clouds with the saints. And it's going to be the kingdom is going to come down here to earth, which is darkness and corruption. And somehow that's going to happen. Well, the question is, well, when that happens, given that these people who aren't saved and don't believe, don't have eternal life, how is that kingdom going to manifest into them? Given that it's an eternal kingdom and the Bible clearly says the things which are not seen are eternal. So that means they're going to have to see it by what? Faith, the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. So maybe your pastor's lying to you. He, he just might be. I don't know. I got, a, I got a feeling he just might be lying to you. Just, just a little clue. And given that God's children have eternal life, right? I give unto them eternal life. You know, we thus judge that one died for all, then we're all dead. Jesus came to do what? To give life and life more abundantly. And since God is eternal, and the Bible says this, the following verse, which your pastor probably won't show you, but Israel shall be saved, what? In the Lord. So if Israel saved in the Lord, and the Lord's eternal, and you can't see the Lord, and how are you going to see Israel, which is eternal, which is in the saved in the Lord? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. You can't. So maybe, just maybe, your carnal Zionist friend is telling you a lie. It could be. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put it out there that 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 just maybe they're lying to you. Now, there's a reason why I showed you all this. I don't want this video to go on too long. Based on 2 Corinthians 4:18. If you see that God is eternal, right, which means he's not seen, right? That's why it says no man has seen God at any time. Of course, people saw the man, Christ Jesus. The man, Christ Jesus, said, I can do nothing, right? And then he was saying it was God that worketh in him. He did the work, right? And so, but the man, Christ Jesus, is the mediator between God and man. But then there's the head, which is the head of the household, which is the father, and that's spiritual because it says, be ye not carnally minded. And we see here that God's what? Eternal. 
So that's why it says this Bible spiritually discerned. Uh, it's kind of weird for God to be carnal if his word spiritually discerned. That's kind of stupid, right? And then plus he said children of the flesh aren't children of God, but, you know, whatever. Okay, so that's that. And then God, he's eternal, has a kingdom, right? And his kingdom is an eternal kingdom. And those people who enter his kingdom, they have eternal life because he promises that he, they'll have it forever. So it makes sense that it's not temporal. So before God, you know, one of the things God did is God put on, came in the likeness of sinful flesh in the man, Christ Jesus, the mediator between God and man. That's the veil. He was veiled in the flesh. Now us, we're born of flesh and blood. But the flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God, hence we must be born again. And if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away. Well, all things have become new. The new man has to be a what kind of man? Spiritual man. Now, God says my kingdom is not of this world. There was a group of people called the Pharisees. And they didn't like the fact that Jesus was saying all these things about his kingdom not being of this world. About the fact that he was telling them that they were children of the devil. The fact that he said that he'd come only for the lost sheep of the household of Israel, but then proceeded to tell those people who thought they were of Israel and thought they were quote-unquote Jews, he proceeded to tell them that they were of their father the devil. He said they were not his sheep because they didn't believe, they didn't hear his voice. He said his sheep had eternal life, they should never perish, neither should anyone snatch them from his hand. So he's telling these guys, like the guy on the right, he says, you're not my sheep. Now he'll tell anybody that. Who doesn't believe it doesn't matter what they look like he'll just say look you got to be born again anyway so what you are now is a sinner uh dead in your sins and you need to be uh you're a sinner who's in need of saving and um you're dead yes and you need to have life and life more abundantly and i come to give eternal life but you got to get that only after you believe the gospel so the temporal place that they're calling Jerusalem and Israel, which your government's happily sending all your taxpayer money and military equipment to colonialize the Middle East under this whole guise and ruse to pretend that they're doing this stuff in the name of God, which is the same trick they did back in the old days of Manifest Destiny and Western colonization. They're doing the same ploy in the name of God using the Bible. And of course, they did that by using the modern versions, uh, vilifying the KJV, uh, getting all this information disseminated to all the quote unquote seminaries and all your pastors who can't seem to figure it out. And so they've got you believing that that place over there in the Middle East is some great prophecy. But the problem you guys is, it says something in the Bible about We can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. That's the problem. All these people who think they're fighting a war, look. God's not willing that any should perish, so all should come to the knowledge of the truth. But guess what? If people don't believe the gospel, guess what? They'll just die, and then another person will come, be brought forth, and they'll have a chance to believe. And if they don't believe, another person will die, and another person will be brought forth. That's, that's unfortunately, you know... <laughs> Unfortunately, many people have been fooled to think that um, the battle is a carnal battle. It's not a carnal battle at all. It's all spiritual. It's all spiritual. Right? Because any carnal battle is what? Temporal. Temporal. Right? If you have to believe the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen to get something that you can't see, which is eternal life, to be a child of God, the Father, to enter his kingdom which is eternal, and to be his child, which is those who have eternal life, it can't be a carnal thing. Okay? Now, with that, I'm going to play this guy who's a rabbi. This alone guy destroys the Trinity. Trinity destroyed here. Carnal Zionism destroyed here. His kingdom being of this world and the eschatology of your pastor destroyed here and here. Okay? All because people just needed to read here. And they could look to see that his children have eternal life. You can't tell who they are. 
His kingdom is eternal, you haven't seen it. And God's a spirit, and you haven't seen him. Okay? So with that, uh, I want to go ahead, I guess, and... I don't know, maybe I should just let it go at that. No, I guess I'll go ahead and continue this video. So I want to play one clip, because the reason I'm doing that is I want to show you something else. Hands of questions. But if they know the Kabbalah, everything would match perfect in a puzzle with no arguments whatsoever. But maybe when Mashiach come, finally everyone would understand the concept. What okay. So he says, finally, when Mashiach comes, everyone will understand the concept. When he says, when the Mashiach comes, everyone will understand the concept, because this guy is talking about, he's talking about the resurrection. Right? He said, when Mashiach comes, everyone will understand the concept. Well, here's the problem, guys. Here's the problem. Uh, the problem is I can't spell. Man. Wow, I just cannot find this first, guys. So, um, the problem we're going to have, man, let me go ahead and put the New Testament here. The problem we're going to have is, um, Here we go. Here's, a, here's another way I can find it. I hate when I can't find stuff, but let's go ahead and keep on going. Let's go to the New Testament. Look. There it is. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay? But as many as received him, so he says when Mashiach comes, when the Messiah comes, when Christ comes, well, guys, guess what you're called? You're called the body of Christ. And guess who worketh in you? Guess who lives in you if you're saved? It's no longer I have to live, but Christ that liveth in me. That's Galatians 2.20. You're the body of Christ because you're led by the what? The head leads the body. It means you're led by the spirit. Hence, the head leads the body. It's a spiritual body. It's what, guys? It's an eternal body. Right? The father is the head of the household. He's the head of the body. The children, this is the body. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Y'all been baptized into one body by one spirit. Right? That body is also called the wife, New Jerusalem, is mother of us all. So there's Jesus who's the head that's led by the spirit, right? That's a spiritual head because the carnal mind is at enmity with God. Remember that? That would be temporal. God's not temporal. So the head of the body is Jesus, who's the father by spirit, because the man Jesus had no children, apparently. He was temporal, right? And so the head of the body, which is Jesus, who's the father, who's the lamb, who's married to New Jerusalem, who's mother of us all, that's the body who carries the what? Children, right? Who are eternal also, not seen. You can't see it. But we, who are the children, our father is a king who's made us all kings and priests, we have the kingdom within us, and we're saying we're offering people the kingdom, saying the kingdom of God is at hand, right? Believe the gospel. So because of that, we're saying that people just need to believe the gospel because you have to receive him, right? Because when they receive us, they're receiving him because we're coming in whose name? Our father's name. Who is who? Jesus. We have but one God, the father. Gave them the power, which is by the Spirit, to become the sons of God. It's the Spirit that quickened it to give us life, the flesh, probably nothing. Even to them that believe, what? On his name. You got to receive him by the gospel.
by faith. Okay? So this guy's saying when the Messiah comes, so guess what? Give him the gospel. That's the Messiah coming in us. Once the resurrection of the death will take place, people will not die again. Okay. Once the resurrection of the dead take place, people will not die again. Well, guess what, guys? This is going to expose another false teaching and heresy. Jesus said, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. Right? Whosoever liveth, right? Because you're walking, you can't believe on him after you, quote, die carnally. Right? You got to believe on him while you're alive and with your physical life so you can get eternal life. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believeth thou this. He said, when the resurrection happens, they said they'll never die again. Well, guess what, guys? If you believe you've been resurrected, you've been quickened by the, by the Spirit. Your mortal body has been quickened. It's no longer I to live, but Christ to liveth in me. Right? I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ to liveth in me. That's Galatians 2.20. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. Meaning they follow me in a regeneration, washing, renewing of the Holy Ghost. Meaning you have the Spirit. Meaning you're born again. Regenerated. Regenerated means born again. Regenerated. Reborn into a new family, not the old family, which is a flesh, which is temporal, but born again by the incorruptible seed, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. You'll never die because you're sanctified in the word of God, and the word of God never dies. It never fails. Okay? So that's what that's saying. So, this is exposing that he says they'll never die. He's, what people are, don't understand is everyone's waiting for the quote-unquote second coming. Well, Christ comes, it's a visitation because he comes in his saints, the body of Christ. See how Zionism works? It's got this guy blind and fool, he's waiting like most of the world's waiting. For how long? For 1,000 years. It's the 7,000. He says for how long? For 1,000 years. Why is it 1,000 years? Because you enter his wrath, right? Six days shall I do that work. Six days shall thou do thy work. Thy work. That's not the work of God. Six days shall do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and thy stranger may be what? Refreshed. May it be refreshed. Right? Refreshed. Right? Six days may work be done, but in the seventh, in the seventh is the Sabbath. In the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever does any work in the Sabbath day, he shall be truly be put to death. It's basically saying those who haven't entered the rest of Jesus Christ, right? Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest, right? For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished when? From the foundation of the world. That Sabbath is this once you and that Sabbath goes throughout all time here on this here on this planet, right? Because you're not you're, the Sabbath is not really of this world. The Sabbath represents being born again, being found in Christ. Right? 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 That's why it says he who have believed do enter do enter into rest. Right? And it says being found in him. Be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is, a, which is of the law. That's why you can't work. Right? The law is a schoolmaster leads unto Christ. Once you come to faith, you're no longer under schoolmaster because once you come to faith, you're no longer under schoolmaster because you're born again of above. And this earth and everything here on this in this world is under the law, which is a schoolmaster. But once you're born again, you're born again from above, Jerusalem above is free, it's mother of us all. So which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Right? So that's what he's talking about. So that's that thousand years is actually representing all those who are in Jesus Christ, the Sabbath rest. And since that Sabbath rest continues, okay, I believe I'm no longer of this world. I'm in I'm in Christ, who's the Sabbath. I have eternal life. What day is it? What day is it when I'm in Christ? Do I ever exit his Sabbath rest? No, I enter his rest. I'm in his rest. I'm not, it doesn't matter if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday here on this earth. The Sabbath, the rest, is not of this world. It's being in Christ. It's being sealed. It's the baptism. Okay? And that Sabbath continues every day of the quote-unquote week. 6,000, which is the creation. One more. He says 6,000, which is the creation. You know, it's funny because he's right. He's saying that number, remember in the Revelation it says 666, right? That's the number of man, 66, which is creation, which you'd rather be born again. You can't be that. If you're born a man, you're born in sin, you die, right? And the dead were raised, right? So that's it, right? Men, 666. It's saying that you got to be born again. So to be born again is to have, to be a new creature created by the Spirit. And it says, right, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. And it says, thou fool. Because it says, some people say, well, resurrection, you know, what are we talking about resurrection? The Bible's going to explain to you. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? See, because this guy is looking for what? He's looking for people to be raised up in their flesh. That's temporal. That's what your pastor's been telling you. That's a lie. Can you see the resurrection of people have eternal life? No, you cannot. You can see the mortal body, but it says I'm dead to the flesh. It says you're dead to the flesh and alive according to the spirit. Once you believe you're a new creature created in Christ. Can anybody see that your old man's passed away and your new man is here? They can't see it, can they? No, they can't see that you have eternal life. Spot the people who have eternal life. Go on the street and point them out, all those who are in Christ who have eternal life. You can't because eternal is not seen, right? All you can see is their quote unquote dead body, right? You can see the flesh that they have. Right? The reason you can see their flesh is because it says, look, thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except to die. And thou that sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. Thou sowest not that body that shall be, but a bare chance it may be of wheat or of some other grain, but God gives the body as it pleased him. Is God pleased with the flesh, the corrupt flesh? No, the children of the flesh cannot please God, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same, but it's talking about the difference between men, beast, fish and birds so men's flesh is the same it's just a difference between birds and whatever there are celestial terrestrial glory of celestials one the glory of terrestrial another there is the glory of the sun another the moon another the stars another is one star different from another it's also the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in what in corruption it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power it is sown a natural body it is raised a what spiritual body well, if it's raised a spiritual body, guys, let's go back to this little diagram. Can you tell where the children of God are? No. Are you ever going to be able to tell where the kingdom of God is? No. Are you going to be able to tell where God is? No. God the Spirit knows that worshiping was worshiping spirit and truth. So this exposed the Trinity here. This exposes Zionism here, right? This exposes your pastor all throughout here. This exposes hypostatic union here. Right? So, and this is exposed all these people who are Steve Anderson, who, who talks about he's against the New World Order, but he says, well, this world's not going to pass away. Right, Steve. Let's just go back to this verse right here. 2 Corinthians 4 18, the things which are seen are temporal. Okay? So, anybody tells you this heaven and this earth are going to stay around, you just say, well, the way I can see it, and then it says in 2 Corinthians 4 18, it says, if I can see it, it's temporal. You say, well, didn't people see the man, Jesus Christ, the unbelievers, everybody, right? Yep. All right, then. That settles it. That's the man, Jesus Christ. God's a spirit who came in the likeness of sinful flesh. See how that works? See how it destroys the train? Demolishes it. Let's see if we can refresh this and get this guy to talk a little bit more. He's just revealing all kinds. Such of as Moshe and Aaron and David and all the rest would want to resurrect back to such a horrible world that we live in. You compare this world to where they are right now? Why would they even want to come here? It's a downgrade. The answer, absolutely not. It's a big upgrade. Why? Now the world is full of evil inclination, full of war and murder and horrible things. Because people destroy the world with their bad traits, with their bad choices. If people, each one would correct himself, no one would kill anyone, everyone would live in harmony, everything would be beautiful. No wicked people in the world, no rape, no murders, no stealing. Imagine such a world. If every person would live according to the Torah, all people in the world, you can leave your home, don't have to worry, no alarm, no police, no court, no billions of dollars to police cars every two months, they change their cars, none of these things. Why? 
He would need them. That would be a fantastic world. No one would have to kill himself and walk. No one, the world would be ideal. But are, apparently we are very far from it. But when the Mashiach would come, it will be the resurrection of the dead. The one of the first thing Hashem is doing is slaughtering the Satan, which is the master of evil inclination of all people. Hashem shochet et satan the Gemara say. When the Satan, which is an angel, will be dismissed, automatically all the evil inclination of all the people that left in the world automatically is dead. No one will have desire not to steal, not for food, not for forbidden relationship, not for lies, not for honor, not for anger. Everything will be completely dismissed. The world will be perfect. No one will be born. There's no more reincarnation because there's nothing to correct. Those who made it, made it. Those who didn't make it will never make it. They miss the train. No more reincarnation because a reincarnation is a chance to correct your soul. You miss the train, it's over. You didn't do it, you finished. But those who made it will never have another, another sin, ever. Why? Like the Rambam writes in Yuchot Melachim in the last page. Everything is like you just pick up sand from the floor, it's like diamonds. No one would fight for anything, no one has desire, no one will touch something that doesn't belong to him. In that moment, the world would reach the level of Adam, first Adam, before the sin. Before Adam made the sin and the evil inclination went inside, it was a perfect world. Now, it will be like Adam in Garden of Eden before the sin. That's why it's an upgrade. Even though the righteous people are enjoying very much right now, it will be greater over here that the soul will come into a pure body and will not have any inclinations, any sins, no desire, no nothing, and will be attached to Hashem with no obstacle. No resistance. Everyone would learn Torah. The Gentiles that will be left in the world, there will be many of them, the righteous Gentiles. There's a movement now of many goyim who are waking up and keeping the seven laws. Those Gentiles will be admiring the Jewish nation and will receive Torah from them. And the Jews will reach the highest level. Anyway, as you can see, this guy is fully delusional. He's, he's drank the Zionist Kool-Aid, the carnal Zionist Kool-Aid. You know, it's really stupid. Um, again, let me show you one more verse. This will shut this guy up. It won't shut your American Zionist up because they're, they're, they're too brainwashed. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and loved it even as Christ, the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. He's talking about the church being of Christ's flesh and bones, right? The Lord, the church, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Well, what, what, what color is, uh, what color is the church again? See how that doesn't work? <laughs> what color is the church, guys? Here's another thing. The flesh is temporal. That's why it says of Christ and it says of us, because we've been quickened. This little tabernacle that we have called the flesh, the Bible explains that what's going to happen is once our testimony is done, it should be in First Peter. Oh, sorry. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, look, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Wait a minute, guys. That destroys the Trinity. How's God putting off God? Remember, is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever? It doesn't make sense, right? So knowing shortly that I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. He's saying basically putting off the flesh, right? Because remember, it's sown a natural body, is raised a spiritual body, but it says we're already dead to the flesh, but... You're veiled in the flesh. People can't see. And so it's basically saying, look, your flesh is corrupt. You can't inherit any corruption. So you got to put that off. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. God's a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Confirmed. John 4, 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. I thought Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. That means he must be a spirit. Okay. All right. I praise my Lord and Savior. All the sin comes short of the glory of God. I want to do this just to show, like, people are misteaching their resurrection. So um, it just goes to show you 
a lot of people don't believe the Bible. And so I'm reasoning from the scriptures and I'm giving you scriptures and there's no contradiction here, guys. So hopefully you believe it. Look, all of sin is not of works. You can't work your way to heaven. All you got to do is believe the gospel once and you pass from death to life. And it's instantaneous. It's a free gift that can't be lost. It's not based on the law. That's silly because we said that our legal sin debt was paid by Christ. So there's only one thing left. That's unbelief. So once you believe, again, you're sealed and sanctified. You're a new creature, sealed in Christ, where no sin can get to you. So the gospel is Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. He says his mortal body was quickened by the Spirit, and God's a Spirit. He says the Spirit quickened enough to give life to flesh, profit to nothing. So once your person believes, they pass from death to life and shall not come into condemnation simply by believing that gospel. Again, Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. You believe that you pass from death to life and shall not come into condemnation. All right? Praise the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.